Here's how to use the object removal tool in DaVinci Resolve. But first, I'll get this out of the way at the start of the video. This is a DaVinci Resolve Studio feature. So if you are using the free version, this won't be an option for you. And I hope I just saved you eight minutes. The object removal tool uses DaVinci's neural engine, in other words, AI, to remove objects in the frame automatically. Smaller objects work best for this tool. I mean, it's not gonna do a great job if you're asking it to remove or replace a large portion of your frame. Uh, but the performance of this tool really relies on your footage and what you're asking Resolve to do. So let's jump in. Okay, so here's our clip and we're gonna to wanna to go over to the color page. Now the way this works is first we have to select what we want to remove, track it, and then apply the object removal. This can all be done in one node. In my shot here, I want to remove this island so it looks like a vast ocean all the way out from the lighthouse. So we're going to head to our window tool from the menu bar and select the pen tool, and I'll draw around my island, basically telling Resolve that this is the thing I want removed. Once we've made our selection, we're going to track it. So we're going to come down to this menu bar and hit the tracker icon. And here we're just going to simply track forward and backwards with this button here. There we go. And it's done a pretty good job at tracking our island for us. Next, we're going to come across and search for object remover. And I'm going to drag that bad boy onto our node and voila, nothing happens. That's because there's still some setting up and tweaking to be done. Like I said earlier, the performance of the object removal tool really does rely on the footage you have. Um, since everyone's footage is different, you will need to tweak the settings each and every time to get the results you want. So if you're following along and something I do doesn't work for you, uh, keep watching because I go over what each setting actually does. So then you can make a judgment call on how to adjust your settings for your footage. There's a lot of trial and error and sometimes a lot of error. Okay, so first thing you want to do is hit the scene analysis button. This analyzes the clip and has a first crack at replacing your object. We need to do this first so we can actually see how the AI is performing and then we can adjust our settings based off that. So it'll either go two ways for you. First is that it works perfectly fine and nails it the first time. If that's the case, I'd probably go buy a lot of two because that really ever happens to me. Or second is this, it just puts in this gray blob instead of actually removing and replacing your object. Basically, if you get the gray fill, it means Resolve has had a hard time and needs a little extra push in the right direction. So we come down to the clean plates section and you'll see in the drop down there are three options. Gray image, which is effectively no source. Internal, which takes a best guess approach at generating a background to fill the frame. And external, which lets you connect another input from another node. 99% of the time, we're just gonna use internal and hit the build clean plate button. Now it looks like it's done a decent job. Let's have a play through and toggle off our power windows. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's try our next shot. Here, we're gonna remove the soccer posts to make it seem like a nice open field. And for this one, we'll be playing around with the blend settings to get it just right. Okay, so same thing as before. We're gonna to go to our windows and draw around our posts that we want to remove. Cool. Next step is to track this back and forth with the track forward and reverse button. Now we drag our object removal tool onto our node, hit the scene analysis, hit the build clean plate on internal. Okay, so it's done an okay job. If we zoom in here, we can see the color is slightly off on our grass. This is because our blend mode is set to linear, meaning that the AI is going to try and hold the color or shade the same from our initial set reference clip. Now, if we choose adaptive blend, the AI will look around the image and how the colors and light are changing throughout the clip and apply that to our selected area. So here you can see the start of our clip, the grass is slightly darker around it than at the end. So if we change this to Adaptive Blend, you'll see now throughout our clip how the light is changing on our selected area to match what is around it. The last setting to play around with if you're still not quite happy with the results is the Scene Mode. And sorry, I have been doing the settings kind of in reverse order. Uh, that's just how I like to step through them. So, sue me. 
So the three options in C mode are background, boundary, and object. Background analyzes the entire image except for the object region. Boundary analyzes the boundary areas surrounding that object region. Uh, object is for analyzing an object that moves with the background, like our football goals on the pitch, for example. And you have to remember every time you change one of these settings, you're going to have to hit scene analysis again for the AI to implement those changes. I hope this video helped you remove whatever annoying things you have in your shot. Uh, if you like this video and want to see more tutorials, then hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.